That BP, that pack has been troublesome. Okay, I'll go. Well, it just doesn't seem to play well with these guys. Oh, okay. I, I'm not sure. Test, test. But if I'm over here, that's okay? All right. This is all right? all right? Ah! What's going on here? Let me try. Let me try.
Good morning. And welcome to Sunday worship at Ankeny United Church and ankenyucc.org, where we are a welcoming church family, exploring progressive Christian theology, caring within, and serving beyond. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are invited to walk with us this morning. And that means whether this is your first time here or your 2,000th time here or somewhere in between, you're welcome here. Whether you are seeking to serve or need to be refreshed, both or neither, or somewhere in between, you are welcome here. Whether you are widowed, singled, married, coupled, or somewhere in between, you are welcome here. Whether you are gay or straight, both or neither, or somewhere in between, you are welcome here. Children of all ages are always welcome to come as they are in our worship, and you are too. But we have a staff nursery should you need it. This is the worship of God at Ankeny United Church and ankenyucc.org, and we're glad you're here. Now please rise and body your spirit to join in our call to worship. Welcome to God's new day. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Everywhere we look, we see life. In the green and the growing and the gathering of neighbors, we discover God's energizing presence. Love has conquered death. God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Christ is present among us today. Praise God. Please join us in our opening hymn, number 287, Come Teach Us, Spirit of Our God, verses 1 through 3. And on this second Sunday of Easter, let us share the peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The psalm reading this morning is from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Holy One, you are my God, my good above all other. All my delight Light is, is upon, upon the godly, godly that, that are in, in the land, land upon, upon those, those who are noble among people. people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their, their libations, libations of blood I will not offer nor, nor the, names the names of their, their gods upon my lips. O oh God, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My, my boundaries, boundaries enclose a pleasant land. land. 
Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless you, O God, who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have I set, set you always before me, because, because you are at my right hand. I shall, shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For, For you, you will not abandon me to the grave, grave nor, nor let, let your, your Holy One see the pit. pit. You will show me the path of light. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. To each petition of merciful God, please respond, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. We pray for the church. Breathe your spirit into us, renew us with your power, unite us in mission, and send us into the world with your love. Merciful God, for the earth, for fields and forests, gardens and vineyards, and all newly planted crops, Sustain our world with clean water and favorable weather. Merciful God, for the nations, empower leaders to work for the well-being of all. Send peace into every place where people live in the shadow of violence and displacement. Free all who are isolated behind walls of fear. Merciful God, for, the, for all those in need, look with compassion towards those who bear hidden wounds, Draw near to those who seek you. Comfort the dying, console the grieving, and heal the sick. Merciful God. For this assembly, give us courage to welcome newcomers graciously. Walk with those who are inquiring, those who harbor doubts and questions, and those who are absent from us. Merciful God. With thanksgiving, remember those who have died in the faith. Inspire us by their witness. Bring us with them to the heavenly feast. Merciful God. At this time, we welcome the congregation to share the prayer concerns that you have on your heart at this time, the celebrations and the concerns. Are there any prayer concerns? Oh, that's wonderful. We're so glad. <laughs> Prayers for Brianna's family and all of her friends. Other prayer concerns. For all of those prayer concerns that we have spoken out loud, we raise up Bruce and his family and friends in celebration, thanksgiving for all of his health care providers at this milestone. Um, may it be the first of many good days to come. And we pray with our hearts concern for the grieving family and friends of Brianna um, and the many who are feeling pain and suffering at this time of loss. And for all of those concerns that we have that we hold silently, let us take a moment to silently reflect. Thank you. 
Gathered into the one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I welcome up the young people for the children's message. Good morning. Thank you for coming up today. So we are going to remind the congregation about something really important, something that we do every Sunday, but you might not think about it, and it's the passing of the peace. Can you all show me your peace signs? Can you all show me your peace signs? Okay. Why do we do the passing of the peace? Is it so we can say hi to our friends? Not really, no. Is it so we can sneak into church late? I think that's the first hymn. Um, Why we do the passing of the peace is, you know, the church is full of people. And sometimes people get cranky with each other. Sometimes people have fights. Sometimes they have falling outs. And they need a chance to come back together. So we share the peace with everyone as a way to remind us that no matter who's in this room or what happened the week before, we're all called to come back together because that's what Jesus wants us to do. And if there's new people that we haven't met, maybe people that we don't know, maybe people that we kind of wonder, well, who's that? What are they doing here? It's a great opportunity for us to be connected to them in the peace of Christ. So passing the peace is an ancient part of the worship service that Christians have done for thousands of years to get us ready to hear the word of God and to have the Lord's Supper. Because when we approach Christ, we need to be right with each other so we can hear those messages and be the community that God calls us to be. So I want you to think about that for you all and you all. Next week, when we share the peace of Christ, keep in mind that this peace is for our community to make it stronger, It's for our worship to make it more heartfelt and open so we can hear and understand what God is saying to us. And it is practice, because if we can't be at peace with each other in here, it's really hard to do it out there. So we practice here with these people so that we're better able to share peace out in the community. So when you go out in the community this week, take your peace with you, okay? And if somebody is really bugging you this week, Maybe give yourself that little peace sign to remember that you've got to bring that peace out in the community too. Thank you for coming up this morning.
Otherwise, you're checking me the whole time, and I can't do that. The Holy Gospel this week comes from John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, unless I see the mark of the nail in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Do people hold grudges around here? In Ankeny? When I served as a pastor in a rural community in Virginia, I remember a number of good folks who were at the same time children who would not speak to their parents, brothers and sisters who would have nothing to do with one another, neighbors who had filed lawsuits against the other person on the other side of the property line and sitting on the other side of the aisle in church, former spouses who communicated only through their children and not always in the healthiest of ways, Brothers and sisters in Christ who refuse to pass the peace with one another. Church members who left because someone did something and they will never come back. But maybe it's different here. In these parts, have you ever heard of anyone holding a grudge? It may start out real small. Someone didn't do something they should have done. Someone goes too far, does something they shouldn't have. A misunderstanding, a disagreement, an offense, some hurtful act, and then the people stop talking to each other. They avoid each other. It can go on for years, decades even. And this can happen with one of them not even knowing it's happening. Do things like that happen around here? Yeah, I guess it happens everywhere. If anyone ever had a good reason to hold a grudge, it would be Jesus. His own disciples betrayed him, denied that they even knew him, left him to die alone. And then, when he came back from the dead, just like he told them he would, he sent Mary Magdalene to tell them, and they didn't believe her. They have been told the good news And here, in this lesson, they're hiding out in a locked room out of fear. If anyone had a right to hold a grudge, it was Jesus. 
But Jesus doesn't stay away. He didn't cut them off. He won't wait for them to come to him. Jesus does not even knock. And when he shows up, his first words are not, I told you so. Instead, he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Jesus is there to forgive. Because he knows not forgiving, retaining sins, just like he told them, means holding on to them. And when you hold on to something like that, it weighs you down. It keeps you from moving forward. It gets you stuck. And Jesus has got things to do. Jesus is moving on. He's going forward into new life. He is bringing others with him. And nothing is going to hold him back. Not death, not the grave, especially not a grudge. So Jesus says it again, just to make certain that everybody heard it, peace be with you. And when Jesus gives peace to the disciples, he doesn't mean a feeling of calm, a feeling of inner tranquility, being free from your worries or cares. When Jesus says peace, he is talking about the peace between people. Jesus is bringing the peace the disciples desperately need, the peace that is in forgiveness. The peace to know that they have been forgiven so that they can move on too. The peace to be able to forgive as they have been forgiven because they are going to need it. Jesus is sending them to proclaim the risen Christ in a world that will not trust their word. Jesus is sending them out to people who have a hard time believing, to people who will harden their hearts against this message, to people who will refuse them shut doors in their faces. There will be many opportunities for grudges against those who reject or refuse, against those who see things in a different way, against those who go in a different direction. But the disciples can't let anything slow them down or hold them back, especially not grudges. They need the peace of Christ so that they can forgive, so that they can move on and keep going forward into new life. And right away, the disciples get to experience how hard their task will be with Thomas, one of their own. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, I put my finger in the mark of the nails, my hand in his side, I will not believe. They had brought the best news in the world. And the way Thomas reacted to them, well, he might as well have slammed that door in their face. How could the good news ever get inside? His heart was shut tight. They could have given up on Thomas. They could have rejected him right back. But they don't. Because they remember it took more than a few tries before the good news finally reached them. The disciples do not turn away from Thomas because the peace of Christ is with them, a peace they have received as a gift of forgiveness. And now it was time for them to forgive Thomas and stay with him, to stay in relationship with him, to stay in that room with him until Christ could come to him in the way that Thomas needed to see for himself. And when Jesus shows up again, the first words out of his mouth are not, I told you so, Thomas. And the other disciples don't get to say it either. Jesus comes to us again and again, showing signs of the resurrection when we doubt, and we do. Coming to us with words of forgiveness when we have rejected him, and we have. Reaching out to us with open arms when we've hidden away in fear. It happens. Jesus comes to us again and again with his peace every Sunday after Easter, a peace we are meant to share. So when you receive the peace of Christ, remember this is not just a time to say hi to your friends, sneak into church late. It is a time to practice sharing Christ's peace, which means you have to get up and out of your seat, leave your comfort zone, 
extend yourself to reach out to someone, to someone that you just didn't or couldn't before. And when you offer that peace, say it and really mean it. Peace be with you. And if you can do it in here, with one of our own, with another disciple, you just may be ready to share the peace of Christ out there, just as Jesus is sending us to do. Amen.
As we offer our treasure and our hearts to you, O God, may they be used to pass on the promise of hope, of peace, of life, of community to all in need of your gifts and presence in their lives. Amen. Go forth into this day and into the world in the image of God, the one who created you. Go with the presence of Jesus who shows the way and go in the peace of the Holy Spirit who is with us now and always. Amen. Amen. 